Welcome back to Golden Rule Radio, and today is interest rate day. No guts, no sense, no vision as Jay Powell <laughs> drops rates another quarter point. I'd agree with the sentiment, although for a different reason. Why are we dropping rates? So we'll get into that here today. But first, how did the markets react? Well, you know, one of you mentioned last week pricing it in. Miles, I know you're a big fan of watching things happen just before the news breaks and then watching it reverse when the reality hits, and I think we saw a little bit of that. The Dow came down, all the white metals and gold came down. The only thing that stayed put and actually climbed a little bit was the US dollar. And we mentioned that last week. If you don't drop 50 basis points at least, it's not gonna be enough to weaken the dollar on the world scene, and I think that's why Trump's so upset. No vision, uh, I don't know, no sense, I don't know about that, but no guts. To quote David McIlvaney, why would that have taken guts? What, to drop interest rates even lower? Yeah, yeah it's about the, the easiest decision you can make. Running into a burning building and rescuing somebody, that takes guts, right? But lowering interest rates another quarter point, where are the guts? Sure, and on the heels of that, I mean, we've had two massive Fed injections. Uh, Tuesday morning, about $53 billion, another $73 billion expected today. Uh, so we'll see if that also comes out. But I remember the days 10 years ago when they were putting $80 billion a month yeah. into the market. And exactly. now we've had more than that in a single week. Well, that's the first time in back-to-back -back days that we've seen that happen since 2007, actually. So that is a big piece of news and, and certainly worth discussing. And I mean, Eric, what have you noticed just either from listening to your clients calling in or just watching the reaction here in the last few hours to the interest rate move? I don't think people truly understand what's going on right now. I don't think people understand the gravity of interest rates falling at the rate that they are. You've got Europe already gone negative, as we spoke on last week. And, you know, we have a president that's demanding the same thing happens here. And, you know, Jay Powell's doing his best to kind of resist. But at the same time, here we are with another drop. And I think it's going to continue. But I don't think people really understand what's taking place right now. Well, it wasn't enough, as I mentioned, to, to really move the equities markets. In fact, they, they started dropping after the news was released as well. You know, nothing short of huge decreases is going to give you a whole lot of wind in those sales. And what's interesting to me is the timing of all of this. If he's trying to stimulate equity market activity and new highs, it seems to me as if he's very early. Okay, if he's trying to stimulate weak dollar policy, then the timing does make sense. And, and I can understand his frustration because if that is your end game and that's your main objective, then you do need to compete on the world scene. But look at what negative interest rates have done in Europe. They've resulted in an all-time high in the gold price. They've, they've resulted in such a weakening of the euro, right, that it's, that it's almost on parity with the dollar. Now is the time to vacation in Europe. And so there is a true impact to the U.S. dollar and it being relatively stronger than other currencies, but it's still shocking to me that you can have a negative dollar event end up in boosting the dollar on the dollar index. Well, and like you mentioned, while we had a slight reaction in the equities market, we really haven't. You know, it's, it's stayed within the trading range. We haven't had a ton of movement. Uh, we have had movement in the transport. So if the whole concept here is to try to boost uh, sales of goods overseas. We're certainly not seeing that immediately. Uh, we're certainly not seeing it over the last week with the expectation of interest rate rises because the Dow transports are continuing down. Uh, and down pretty strong, I would argue, this week compared to what the industrials are doing. So I see uh, no semblance of a market correction getting caused by this. Uh, this is really just trying to keep the boat afloat at this point. We're at an all-time high in the equities market, have been for a while, can't get past it. The transports are turning down. Gold's up 20%. Silver's up over 30%. Market's rolling over. And if, if you haven't come to that conclusion yet, I don't know what to do at this yeah, point. Yeah, this is all about a stay of execution. Well, and Miles, I heard you uh, discussing this with one of your clients you know, earlier this week that was, I think, giving you an earful about how well the stocks were doing versus gold. And you just flat out told them the stocks haven't done anything for two years. You know, it's not like they've continued to go up over the last two years. They've kind of been stagnant with a little bit of pressure to the downside. Sure. And I think that's why we focus on market cycles here. I mean, markets roll over. That's the nature of it. Gold hits tops, gold hits bottoms. Most people don't buy until it's hit a top. 
that's the reality of, of how the general public reacts to markets. People didn't buy stocks when they were 6,600 in 2009. People bought stocks when they were 15, 17, 18,000 again a few years later. And we saw the same thing in precious metals. And we don't want our clients to miss the first part of this move. We want our clients in now at the beginning stages. So, well, I'll, I'll say here too, I'll tell you what the equities markets have done the last two years. They've garnered all of the attention, all the love, right? Mm-hmm. And despite all this activity in the precious metals markets telling us that the global economic system is broken or sick, it's not getting the in- the attention, right? So let's jump into the nitty gritty here and, and jump into the technicals of gold and look at just the last week. You know, here we are right back where we were on the 10th and the 13th price wise, but show us what's transpired in that period of time. So gold's got a couple different options here. Uh, you know, like we talked about last week, some of that uh, market movement was already priced in. Uh, so gold remains on a short term chart just since uh, kind of the beginning of August. We've been sitting in this high 14, low 15 range. Uh, you've got a pretty defined floor at around 1480. Uh, That was where the old low was, and we've made a few tests towards it. But if you ignore that low and just kind of look at this, uh, what I would argue, pretty clear head and shoulders pattern building here, we do have a declining floor. So I'm still on the argument of, granted, we're in a trading range, and you can't make a definitive answer one way or the other till either we get below 1480 or above 1560. But I think we're more likely to push down than up get a nice D wave correction, reconsolidate, build a solid base, and then we're targeting quite a bit higher prices in the 17, 1800s for the next move up, probably throughout the beginning part of next year. So my recommendation is if you have money waiting to go into metals, let's see how this shakes out. I don't mind buying at 1565. I mean, it's obviously better to buy at 1500. But in the same breath, if we do get a lower push down, if we can pick up an extra 50 bucks an ounce, I'd be pretty happy with that. Yeah, the other piece of advice that, that someone could run with is cost average in. You know, on this correction and this little low that we're seeing here, take an initial position. And if we take off to the upside, give yourself a ceiling. If we continue to correct down, remain patient and add you know, your additional positions on the decline. Sure. And and know that when I'm talking about pricing, I'm talking to people who already have a foundational position in metals. You know, this is this is the discussion for people that have a 20, 25 percent gold position and they're looking to build that position as the equity market tops out. If you don't have a metals position, you can sit on the sidelines, watch that price go up 2000 and never decide to jump. And we don't want to see that happen either. So these pricing discussions are for clients who already understand the underlying issues here like competitive devaluation inflation money going into the market interest rates going to or below zero the government confiscating your savings through those lower interest rates and then making it very very hard to get your money from anywhere else like say through capital controls for people that are trying to shelter money overseas there are tons of reasons to have foundational gold position so when we're talking price moves, please understand we've already had that first part of the discussion, and hopefully you have too. Well, Miles, moving into silver, you had said last week that you'd like to see silver drop back into that $14, $15 range just for another price entry. We have had a little drop in silver, and it dropped a little bit more rapid than gold because our gold to silver ratio climbed back up to 84 to 1. But as it sits, we're still you know mid-17s in silver. Where do you see it going from here with this news? Yeah, first really good stopping point for silver, I'd say, is around like 1635. I mean, that's the the previous high point in early 2019 before we had this big jump this summer. It's also lined right up with the 618 FIB. So a couple bucks down in silver would be great. And I think that also gets our ratio back up into the mid 80s, um, you know, going from 92 to 78. Uh, it's expected to see a little bounce up. And uh, so silver still very, very enticing for me oh, as for a sure. investment option. Yeah. I mean, if that does happen and you see that decline in silver, remember, it's not just that silver is going to move percent by percent with gold. It's going to outpace it on the downside. And just like what we saw silver doing to the upside as both of them were climbing, silver again is going to lead that charge. So stay patient on that too. If we do see the decline, you've got two things moving in your favor. You've got the spot price. So you're getting silver at a discount. 
Two, you've got the ratio, which means you're getting gold at a discount if you buy silver first. So right now, you're looking at a you know about a 40 cent discount on gold by positioning in silver first, and if that ratio widens further, you've got a 45, 50 cent discount on gold. Moving over to platinum and palladium miles, platinum's back down in that 930 range, and for the first time in a while, platinum and palladium both went the same direction today, which was down. That's something we haven't seen in a while, it seems. Yeah, I would argue for different reasons, although at the time of this recording on Wednesday, they're both down exactly $10 each, uh, which is uh, a bigger move for platinum than palladium, given their current pricing. But platinum came into its first FIB level, the 382 FIB, uh, right at around 920 Uh, and probably has a couple steps down to go. Although it could stop here because this was the high from back in like March, April, uh, as it's been stepping up. And this previous move up in platinum actually broke that year or so long trend line, rising trend line we've had. So wherever the correction goes, that was a pretty good bullish indicator. Somewhere maybe around 860, 875, I think would be about my favorite. Uh, point to drop down to on platinum, but that's making the assumption we get a deep correction. You know, this could turn around at any time. So yeah, platinum coming back down, another great opportunity, A, platinum palladium ratio, B, platinum to gold ratio. I mean, that chart looks very enticing as well. So a solid white metal position to complement your gold still makes a lot of sense. Well, and Tori, before we get out of here, let's touch on a few more, uh, fundamentals that happened since the last time we recorded as well as some geopolitical events obviously we had the drone strikes um in saudi arabia that had a massive impact on the oil price but we also had some jp morgan traders from their precious metals department getting tied up in a federal rico case for some price manipulation so that's again yeah (laughs) again yeah (laughs) we'll see what plays out with this i mean it's a different administration now it's a different department of justice it's you know, something that can actually be a little encouraging. It would be great to see some of those price suppression tools taken out of the market because this is like an ongoing 10 plus year event. And so it looks like they're in serious trouble and this is actually going to trickle uphill at JP Morgan Chase because it's been allowed. It's been allowed on a grand scale and it's been allowed over a significant period of time. So that's why that's garnering a lot of news. They're, they're actually surprised at the Fed's response right now, not only with the arrests that they've made, uh, but with the accusations or, or at least the leakings of supposed future arrests, again, traveling uphill in the organization. But yeah, that Saudi Arabia oil thing, oil you know, from then went up, 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 and now it's gone down, down, down. I mean, it had its biggest one-day climb since 1991, up over 20% at one point, and far exceeding the $60 a barrel figure, and now we're down around $58 a barrel. Yeah, it's given up most of those returns just, like, yeah. just, in, just all in the same week. That's why you do it on leverage, and then you get out before it drops. <laughs> right. That's no, just no risk in that solid, safe yeah. investment advice right there. <laughs> yeah, scratch that. But anyway, no, it's, uh, you know, all eyes on Yemen and Iran. Last week, we're talking about some other geopolitical pressures, and you just do not know what the news of the day is going to be that moves the metals prices and certainly the oil prices when it comes to geopolitics anymore. And we're going to see what Trump does. You know, he's saying that he's going to have a press conference on what the retaliation should be, probably just deeper sanctions against Iran, because again, all fingers point to Iran when these types of events happen. So before we leave, a little heads up, the the topic of discussion is so deep that we're going to save some of it for next week. And we're going to get into some of the fallout or negative implications of extremely low interest rates or certainly zero to negative interest rates. So tune in next week and, and we'll certainly touch on that. Well, that's important, Tori, because as I mentioned earlier, the, the clients that we're talking to and the general public does not really understand the consequences of this. So we want to spend a little bit of time, you know, trying to educate people on that. We are an educational program, so we feel it's our need to do so. So that's going to do it for Golden Rule Radio this week. We thank you for stopping by. Do the YouTube stuff with the buttons below or better yet, head on over to our website if you'd like to learn more about our strategy towards the precious metals market. We can be found at McElvain dot com twitter at ica gold and facebook is mcelvaney financial as always if you'd like to discuss your personal portfolio you can give us a call at 1-800-525-9556 thanks for listening have a great week